Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you the best OBS recording settings for 2025. Now this will specifically be OBS 32.0.4. As well as going to show you how to set up OBS in 2025. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr and here you can get a YouTube logo and banner or a modern minimalist YouTube logo and banner for your YouTube channel. But now back to the video. So first of all, what you always want to make sure you do, no I can't right now because I'm recording, is that you select the right profile or that you create one. So you want to click on profile right here, you create a new profile, name it whatever you want, and that profile will actually remember all of your settings. So it's actually quite important that you keep that one in mind. Then right here, you want to add a scene, so you can have multiple scenes, and you basically what you want to do then is you right click and you do add scene here. Then right here, you can actually name it whatever you want, and the next thing you do is you click OK. And basically you can add all the scenes right here, you can add multiple ones where you have different sources. And now talking about the sources right here, we have them, and what you can do is actually right click and add a source now in my case i did a display capture so what you see right here as you can see is a display capture basically just recording my display and so as you can see if i right click again add source there are a lot of different options you have right here so a lot of different sources that you can record like for example if you do right click add source you can also do a game capture here you can name it whatever you want you click ok and right here you can do capture specific window and then you have to click the window right here and then the game in, in question that is running now i don't have any games running right now but if you had a game running you would select that specific window and then right here you would be able to click ok and you also have it right here as you can see so then i'm going to go to an important part of course is going to be the settings and as you can see right here i'm in a general tab in the language you can change it i have set to english but you can change it to whatever you want then here we have the updates now it's actually pretty important you can also do for example the betas release that's going to give you some pre-release versions but they might be a bit more unstable because they're betas but you have that option as well if you want the early newer versions of obs you can check that one and of course also here automatically check for updates on startup is also something i can advise you so that every time you launch it up automatically and there's a new update available you can check that one as well if you want of course now if you scroll down here there's really nothing else to mention here these are some extras and so at the end of every page make sure you click apply and then you click ok now here you have the appearance tab and it's purely going to be the appearance of obs itself so i have the theme here i set it to yummy styles classic you can also change that to default or we'll do something gray you can also change the font size here and the density as well but that's of course very optional it's the ui it's basically the obs layout so then right here, I'm going to go to the output tab. And so I'm going to go up to the recording tab right here. And so first of all, up here, we have the output mode. Make sure that output mode is on advanced. That's very important. It's going to give you more options down here. And so also make sure that type is actually set to standard as well. Then the recording path here, obviously, this is going to be the path where the recordings will go once you're done with them. Now you can click browse and actually go ahead and see for yourself where you want your videos to be saved, your recordings. So just choose the right path and just know that every time you finish recording, it will go to that folder. Here we have the recording format. This is very important. I've it to mkv so matroska video that's actually very useful and we'll actually be able later on to remax so to actually create an mp4 file out of that as well i will show you later on in the advanced settings how to actually do that and that mkv will actually make sure that you save it up until a certain point so for example if obs were to crash i would actually have the recording up until the point obs crashed or your computer crashes or whatever if you have mkv plus the mp4 once again that will make sure that you actually keep the recording up until that point so that's very important now you could also go to fragmented mp4 but fragmented mp4 will only take certain parts and fragmented parts basically and not per se the whole thing so that's why it's not really advised it's a bit more safe already than just mp4 but fragmented mp4 is not the one you want to go for per se because it's actually a better one which is going to be hybrid mp4 and that might actually be the best option because with hybrid mp4 you actually don't even need to do mkv and mp4 afterwards it will actually be instantly saved up until that point once again if for example your computer or obs crashes so hybrid mp4 it's a very secure way of recording and it's definitely the one i would advise most now why don't you want to do mp4 mp4 alone well mp4 alone does not save your video so if once again anything happens to your pc or obs it will not save that video at all you just lose everything that you have recorded that's why it's never advised to only record with mp4 as i said do mkv and mp4 or hybrid mp4 those options are way better and way more secure so just keep that in mind never do mp4 alone Something else very important, the video encoder. Now, if you have the right graphics cards, you probably have the AMD options here and the NVIDIA option. For the first one, you could go for the AMD X265 or the HEVC. It's actually a good option you could go for. The file styles will actually be smaller and you will get better image quality. But what I could advise more actually is the NVIDIA NVENC. Now, H264 is not bad, but actually you do want to rather put it on HEVC. It's actually a better option. It's more recommended to have better quality and lower file sizes, which is of course pretty important. So really in this case, I think the best option would be 
USB if you have that option once again the Nvidia NVENC HEVC. Now if you don't have any of the options above here that I mentioned you can always go for the X264 but this is an option is not really advised in general. It will use a lot of your CPU instead of your GPU so your processor and in case you're gonna use it because you can use the N264 but you'll have to put down some settings and choose CBR. I'll actually show you in a second how I'm gonna do the CBR don't worry about that but do know you have to bring down some settings if you only have the N264 as an option. Down here in the audio encoder just put it to FFmpeg AAC. Here as well by the way you have audio tracks now as you can see I have two one is gonna be my microphone the other one is gonna be my desktop audio so everything that's like Windows sounds music but it's also really nice to know you can have multiple tracks audio tracks that whatever editing software you use it will distinguish those audio tracks so that's also very nice now as you can see if you've chosen the AMD or the Nvidia this right here will have the rate control set to probably constant bitrate or in this case constant QP which I advise it's also known as CQP for the older versions so this is definitely something I would advise if you're once again using Nvidia and you basically want to have this I would say around 17 so 16 17 it's a good number because basically if you can go to like 20 or 25 it's not advised it's going to be less better quality and if you go more towards 16 15 if you go down more for and everything it's gonna get a better quality but bigger file size as well and I would really advise you to go between 15 and 25 so 25 being the worst quality and 15 the best quality and as I said 17 is a good sweet spot in between there is something I could advise you to do and the keyframe interval do make sure that this is two seconds then the preset here I've set it to slow good quality you can actually put this also down a little bit so you go to like medium I don't really think you have to go this low right here you shouldn't normally but what you can do is actually go a bit higher as well you really have to check that for yourself but I would say generally speaking keep it around the middle here and slow good quality is the one that most of the times will work best because it's not too high and not too low of a quality then the tuning high quality that you can actually choose here generally speaking you should be able to put this on high quality actually and keep it there this you can keep on two passes profile high once again i don't think you really have to go down here to these options i think it can stay at high pretty easily even though you have a lower end pc and then here you don't have to change anything now as you can see if you do CBR so this is the one you want to select if you do the X to 64 this is the one you want to select you actually have the bitrate right here and I would say you can put it as lowest on like 3000 kbps it's like the lowest you don't really have to go underneath that and at most you can go around like 10,000 kbps and anything in between if you have a good PC you can actually go higher than that already you should be able to to go over 10,000 see how your PC reacts look what's best in your case and same here the keyframe interval I would make sure that's two seconds and here actually the CPU you want to make sure it's between very fast and ultra fast somewhere around there you don't want to really go lower than that if you go lower than that it will give you a less good quality so make sure that once again you should be able at least to put it on very fast because if you go down and really it only get worse profile high and here actually for the tune you can put it at zero latency I would advise that in most cases the, probably the best choice you have is going to be zero latency in this small audio tab here just make sure that the audio bitrate I would just set these to 320 now I don't use all of these but I just make sure that they're all 320 no matter how many audio tracks you use because I just simply think it's the best audio quality and there's really no reason reason to go too low on this one in most cases then we're going to go to the actual audio tab here now just make sure that the sample rate is on 48,000 kilohertz now it could also be 44,800 but there's such a small difference I mean might as well put it at 48,000 kilohertz which is always recommended also in the world of music channel stereo always and here you can set up your desktop audio so as I said earlier I have two tracks it's going to be my desktop audio so anything like sounds in windows music I will hear it through here so I can do my speakers and if I click here if you have another software like for example voice meter as you can see I have some voice meter output here I would select any of these depending to which one I've connected it to you choose your output here and then here you have of course your microphone now I just by default set it to my Blue Yeti because I actually have my effects within OBS right now so I'll show you that later as well but here you can also if you once again use a voice meter like a software that makes your voice better can be very useful then we're going to go to the video tab now up here we have the base canvas resolution so this is going to be the resolution of our screen now I have a 24 inch screen also known as the aspect ratio of 920 by 1080 so that is something I don't want to change you don't want to change the base canvas but that's how it is and then the output scaled resolution though that is something you can change so you can keep it the same at for example 920 by 1080 or you can actually put it down as well if needed for example if you do 1280 by 720 it's really up to you but of course look closely if it's actually a good quality or not or if it's actually affecting the resolution now if you have selected for example the x264 you will have a down scale filter here you have a list of choices you do have to check for yourself which one you choose because if you're using the nvidia you don't have these downscale filters but i would say in most cases test it for yourself but if you really don't know i would say go probably for langsos so the langsos sampling one that's probably going to be the best choice in most cases but once again it can depend on your pc so do check the other ones out as well and see what it does to your video and here of course 40 fps 60 fps which in most cases i would advise there are going to be moments you might want to bring this down to 30 fps but really nowadays most videos will be able to do 60 
60 fps pretty easily rather put some settings down rather than putting it to 30 frames per second but of course you can test around that if you want to and i'm gonna go to the hotkeys right here just simply select a certain key so you go right here and then you select a certain key that you want to do for example if you start recording type r on your keyboard and then it will do a key bind here so but basically every time you click that key it will just automatically start recording you can also pause it of course stop it and do some other things right here so it's actually really nice then here accessibility it's also quite an optional tab this is where you can set some of the colors so you can actually change the colors here by default now this actually might be also useful if you're colorblind you can change some colors around here that are more adapted to you so it's more optional but it's an option that you have so keep that one in mind and then here the advanced tab first up here very important the process priority now, i have put it on above normal you can do like normal above normal or high it should by default be on normal but above normal or high is going to be nice as well because they actually give a priority basically to your recording so the performance can be better because there will be more focus on that recording in question which is of course always nice i can also as you can see underneath here show active outputs warning on exit you can select that one just to be sure now down here in video actually have render 3d 11 you can set it to that just keep nv12 here color space is important do set that to rec 709 otherwise you're gonna have too light footage or too dark and color range limited or full once again you have to see for yourself depends how bright it gets if you set it to full otherwise just keep it at limited and then here, very important, of course, as we saw earlier, we have the option automatically remux to MP4. So this one needs to be selected. This one needs to be checked if you're going to use MKV as a video format. Because once again, if that MKV file is done recording and you have this option selected here, the automatically remux to MP4, it's going to create an MKV file and an MP4 file. And in that case, you want to actually delete once you're done recording, of course. So you have to click on stop recording. Once that's done, you can actually the MKV file and keep the MP4 file, of course. So it's an extra security, basically, if you will, as I said earlier. And so you do have to make sure that this one is checked. Then, of course, once again, click apply and OK here at the end of the page. If I'm back here, just the last things I wanted to show you. You can go ahead to the three dots right here next to your microphone. So this is my microphone. Click on it. I do advanced audio properties. Here, as you can see, once again, the two tracks that I have. First one is my desktop audio. Second one is going to be my microphone. So when I open an editing software where I'm going to edit this video in, I will have one track that's going to be my desktop audio and a second track underneath that's going to be my microphone. You can do some other things, like, for example, boosting some volume here in dB. Pan it to the left or completely to the right if for some reason you want that set it to mono as well here and if you actually want to hear yourself in obs so if you actually want to hear your own microphone you can actually go to in this case of course i'm going to choose the one there where my microphone is click on this i do monitor and output and the moment you click that you'll actually be able to hear yourself talk so you hear yourself live talking in obs so you actually know how you sound if there's any problems it's good and that you like it so then i can close this right here and lastly what's also very important so if i go once again to the three dots here next to my microphone to filters as you can see i have a range of filters right here that are on my voice gain i have some eq expander compressor and also a limiter that actually make my voice better so what you hear right now is just my microphone as you saw earlier i just connected my microphone but i also added these filters on top of my voice so the effects that you hear are these right here now i have a more in-depth video about that how to actually get those filters and how to actually make your voice better in obs really so i have that video up here in the right corner if you're interested in that and to really see how to actually make your voice better within obs so that you don't need any other software to do so anyways guys I really tried to show you here how to set up OBS, really show you all of the basic settings, and of course the best settings for recording in this case. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you like, we're really nice. Subscribe to us, really nice. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.